This is one game away from being NBA champ, being in the history of this game, being always there. The spin move, the finish! Giannis Antetokounmpo with one of the most iconic performances in the storied history of the NBA Finals. And the slam from Antetokounmpo! The long wait has ended after a half century. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. I'm at the top. I wanted to do it here in the city. I wanted to do it with these guys. We <laughs> did it. Jalen Rose, I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen Jacoby. Jacoby. What is it that we do? We get a people. What they want. Last night, game six of the NBA Finals, behind a dominant 50 point performance from Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Milwaukee Bucks are now the champions of the NBA. Jalen Rose, what did you think about this historic performance? from Giannis. I'm glad you mentioned the term historic because let me take you back to where this started. 2013, the Milwaukee Bucks are in the playoffs. Young Buck, Brandon Jennings says, Bucks in six as they're about to play the Miami Heat. They get swept that series. He gets traded that offseason to my Detroit Pistons. You know what else they did that offseason? They drafted Giannis in June and acquired Middleton in July. In that season, they were 15 and 67. They need to win 16 games in this year's playoffs in order to win the championship. So to talk about a maturation of two guys on a team that found a way to endure the turbulence and to achieve their ultimate goal, and for Giannis, you alluded to it, did it in so many different facets. And we're here to make sure we break it down for you every way. First off, let's talk about points in the paint and not settling. <laughs> Came back game one, he was a game time decision. We didn't know he was gonna play. Game Dude. two and three, back to back 40s and 10. Game four, signature block on Aiton. Game five, signature alley-oop from Drew Holiday in game six, historic performance. The points, the rebounds, the assists, and please, 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 before I get to the free throws, let's show some of those blocks. He was Damn standing it. underneath the rim, and it reminded me of watching Kareem footage and or Wilt footage when they were guarding a guy and he would shoot and they would block the guy that they were guarding. Just block him right in front of the hoop. And not only did he block five or six shots, I don't know what the stats said, he contested, changed, and goaltended maybe like another five shots. His effort was something that I had not seen. He gave everything that he had. He was dead tired so many times, I saw him slump over hold his shorts because he wanted it so very bad. And in the post game, he acknowledged something that we are all gonna talk about as this off season and next season progress. That all rings are created equal. In today's landscape of players controlling their narrative, and I love that, whether it's with their voices or social media, they get to do that, we get to do that. But you know what you don't get to do? tell the fans and the media how to feel about it. And there's something to be said for how Dirk was able to get it done with the Dallas Mavs. Well, Jaylen, he alluded to that at the post-game press conference. Let's listen to Giannis Antetokounmpo after winning the championship. This is my city. You know, they trust me, they believe in me, they believe in us. Even when we were like, we were last, the city still was like on our side and um, you know, obviously, I want I wanted to get the job done. You know, uh, they, but that's my stubborn side. Like it's easy to go somewhere and go and win a championship with somebody else. It's easy. I could go. I, I I don't want to put anybody in the spot, but I could go to a super team, and you know, just do my part and win a championship. Still one. But this is the hard way to do it, and this is the way. And we did it. We did it. We did it, man. 
you can tell it just hits different. It hits different when you do it that way. When you stick with one team and you don't join other superstars, you mentioned Dirk and you mentioned the Heat. How do you think that this particular title compares? You acknowledged it. It's one thing to come from fans and media. It's another thing to come from the only player besides Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan to be finals MVP, defensive player of the year, and regular season MVP in Giannis Antetokounmpo. And here are a couple of buzzwords that he used. My city. He said it was easy to team hop. He said, I wouldn't join a super team because all I have to do is just basically play a role and I could get a ring. And he owned it. And like I told you going into the season, one of the more brilliant things that Giannis did is he re-signed with the team. So now that takes pressure off of Coach Bud, who was under the hot seat if they didn't get to the finals or win a championship. But it also takes pressure off Chris Middleton. It allows him now to be the closer. That's the chess move that the Milwaukee Bucks employed this entire season that they hadn't done in the past. And for Giannis, he said it again. That's basically LeBron going to Miami, it's basically KD going to the Warriors, and him saying, well, I watched the journey of somebody like Dirk, who did it with one team, or Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant. There are players who were fortunate enough to do it. Now, it's still about getting it done. But don't underestimate this, the my city part, the my city part. Kevin Durant was at a, a, a parade and his general manager, Bob Myers, even made a joke about basically him not being there when they built it. This is not coming from me. This is exactly how it went down. And as we saw that transpire, we knew that that would always be Steph Curry's city along with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. So in my opinion, that was part of the impetus for KD saying, I want to go somewhere else and establish that I can win a championship, in this case, with the Nets, something that he's hoping to achieve with James Harden and Kyrie Irving on the squad. Well, watching Giannis last night, you could see that he woke up that morning and he said, I will not be denied. And one thing that you mentioned were the free throws. That was one of the things that was so shocking about his performance. We knew he could dominate in the paint. We knew he could block shots. But I did not know that he could go 17 for 19 from the free throw line. And it's also, it's not just what you do, it's how you do it. He stepped up to the line, he was confident. He was shooting it in about seven or eight seconds. He woke up that morning and said, I'm going to go to sleep smelling like champagne, holding the finals MVP and the Larry O'Brien trophy. And Jalen, what do you think about the free throw performance from him last night? I think he's a perfect example of why free throws are about repetition, muscle memory, and confidence. Because he isn't vastly changed as a shooter from the last series to this series, but you alluded to it. He just took his time, he lived in the moment, and he took advantage of it. And watching him be so very dominant, to be honest, it gave me flashbacks to the early 2000s. Because we hadn't seen a player be so dominant in the paint as a big man in theory, like Giannis. He had 20 points in the third quarter. He had two 20-point third quarters in this series. He had three games above 40. He had one game with 50. He had so many different blocks. And so I was like, man, that reminded me of how Shaq was. And Ooh. it made me want to call Dell Davis and apologize to him because I felt so bad watching the big fella turn and hit him with elbows. And there's nothing you can do when those big guys decide that they want to play in the paint. It's a, a, a perimeter oriented game and the wings definitely drive the narrative, whether it's a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James. However, in basketball, when you have a dominant big man that's gonna play percentage basket or a foul type basketball, that's what Giannis decided to do. And he was unguardable. And you know what else he did? Silence DeAndre Ayton. That's mm -hmm. the other thing that Giannis was able to do. Defensively, he virtually made Ayton 
a non-factor. So now for the Suns, you don't have that balance to go with CP3, even if he did get going at some point in the second half. Devin Booker only had four points in the first half. He never got going offensively. They could have used Aiden's offense, but when the Suns are at their best, Jacoby, it's the cams, pain, playing with speed and scoring the ball like he was able to do, or Johnson making threes, or Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder. It's strength in numbers usually when they're at their best. The Bucks did a great job of not allowing them to do so. And lastly, Drew Holiday. He guarded anybody that made two shots in a row. It's like whoever made two shots in a row, put Drew Holiday on them. Did you see how he was sticking to Devin Booker? He, he stripped them twice. That, that's extremely mm -hmm. hard to do. You know this, Jacoby, you play ball. How many times do you see somebody just in the open floor that got game like Devin Booker just get snatched? That's what Drew Holiday was able to do. So it's a terrific defensive effort by the Milwaukee Bucks. It really was. I mean, Drew Holiday has been so good defensively throughout this entire series that we're all going to celebrate Giannis. And of course we should. He put up 50 points with 17 for 19 from the line, had five blocks. He was amazing. But it was Drew Holiday's defense which kind of turned this series in game three and game four. And you also alluded to something earlier that I want to talk about. That is the Middleton and Giannis pairing. These two had played together for so long. And it was during the celebration when the confetti was flying from the ceiling. There was a moment when they just sort of looked at each other like we did it. And I want to share that moment with you right now from the post game. Chris, you did it, huh? Did it. It's that joy, the joy, like we finally did it after eight years, after winning 15 games together in our first year, to winning the championship. And that partnership is something that is a lot discussed about how Middleton's the closer and Middleton's clutch. What do you think about that moment watching those two finally reach the mountaintop? It was, it was terrific to watch in sports and also they knew they missed something. So they brought in some toughness and defense and PJ Tucker and Bobby Portis. Pat Connaughton made shots who was filling in for Dante DiVincenzo. But those two guys were the catalyst. And so many times, if the Bucks had the best record in the regular season or Giannis was winning back-to-back -back MVPs, the question was, could he do it with Middleton as the second best player? That was the question also that people were asking. And he silenced that easily by his efficiency, his patience offensively, and his nature to be clutch. Even in the closeout game, they needed him to put a couple of buckets in the hoop in order to finish yep. off the Suns. And he delivered. I'm glad you mentioned that because we'll all celebrate Giannis. We'll remember this as the Bucks title led by Giannis and Middleton and Drew Holiday's defense. But the Suns had some chances at the end of this game. There was an open three from CP3, an open three from Crowder, an open three from Booker. They had chances in the waiting seconds of this game. But this is all about the Bucks. Their first championship in 50 years since the Big O and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Jalen... While we celebrate Giannis, we'll continue to do so. We do have to talk about what this means for the Suns, what this means for Chris Paul, what is next for the Suns, what should they expect next season, and will Chris Paul opt out? We'll discuss that right after this. You are watching a championship celebration on Jalen and Jacoby. Hey, Yancey Lukumbo. Doesn't matter where you start at. Oh, no, be an NBA player. It only matters where your heart's at. I'm going to do whatever it takes to help my team win, and I'm going to win the MVP. Make the impossible doable. I just want you to know you could be far from the usual. Anything you want, you can get it. Chase dreams like you really can't lose. All you gotta do is get it. My goal is to win a championship, and we're gonna do whatever it takes to make that happen. So follow your dream. Coming to you live above the Heineken River Deck here in New York City. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Anthony Rose. In every finals. When it's over, there's a champion. And I've always said there's nothing wrong with coming in second place. So we're going to check in with Chris Paul, the leader of the Suns, who came in second place, and see where his head is at after the confetti fell. Is there any solace in, hey, I've had this experience, no. and I can learn from it, and I might get back here? Um, 
I mean, it'll take, it'll take a while to process this or whatnot, but it's the same mentality. Get back to work. You know what I mean? I ain't retiring, if that's what you're asking. That's out. So, you know, back to work. So, Jalen, he's not retiring. He can opt out of his contract. He could re-sign with the Suns. He could go somewhere else. What do you think this finals loss means for CP3 and his future in the league? As an NBA stand, I couldn't lose either way because whether Giannis won the championship and his ascension as a 26-year-old or CP3 won the championship in his 16th season, I would have been very happy to see both of those guys win that opportunity. Unfortunately for CP3, the Bucks were just better and more dominant in the paint. The Suns outplayed expectations. There is not a person that can say they picked the Phoenix Suns to win a championship this year. You know? And so, as they ascended in the Western Conference as a team that didn't make the playoffs last year, you add CP, you add Crowder. Shout out to Monty Williams, who was my coach of the year. He did an amazing job developing Aiton and Bridges and both Cams, Payne and Johnson. CP3 was fourth on my ballot in the MVP race. And so, for them to be there, was incredible to me. So there's no shame for me as it relates to CP3 losing to the Bucks, a squad that's been knocking on the door the last couple of years. The Suns just came up short, getting in the finals for their first time since 1993. They didn't win it all, but they did win a championship, the Western Conference Championship. So Jalen, what do you think CP3 does now with the opportunity to opt out? Does he re-sign with the Suns? Does he just market? What do you think? I definitely think he should opt out. It's a great opportunity for him to get another check. He's shown that he can still play at an elite level. And so if I'm the Suns, I find a way to re-sign him. They're gonna lose Willie Green, who's gonna do a terrific job coaching the Pelicans. So they'll have to do an adjustment on their staff. It's interesting to see what happens with Mark Bryan on their staff. Does he get elevated within? Does he go to the Pelicans? So there are a lot of inner workings that are going to happen within the Suns. But the overarching thing is I would love to see CP return to Phoenix, team up with Devin Booker again, and continue to build on what they started. Devin Booker did not play well in Game 6. I'm sure he would tell you that. However, Devin Booker had a pair of 40-point games in the NBA Finals. He's 24 years old. He's a pure scorer. What do you think about this experience for Booker and his future with Phoenix? This was his first, first postseason. You're going to see so many stats of players and the points that they scored in their first, first postseason, and Devin Booker's going to be attached. Here's a guy that led his squad in the bubble to an 8-0 record, and how about this? He's already had a 70-point game in his career. He's had a 59-point game in his career. And now he's been to the NBA Finals. So he's just going to continue to build off of this. And he showed the world that he's an amazing shot maker. You see those actions right there? Whether it's catching it off the dribble, whether it's doing it in transition, doing it with his back to the basket, boxes and elbow style. He's going to be a prolific, prolific score for years to come. As much as we love this Suns run, we celebrate CP3, we want him to return, and Booker's got such a bright future. When you look at the Western Conference, there was sort of a feeling that this was kind of their opportunity. Because if you look up and down the Western Conference, you have the LA teams, the Warriors reloaded, Luka getting better, who knows what happens with Portland, the Jazz are great. What do you do you think this is sort of their one opportunity in this window to get a championship with how stacked that conference is? Yes, I do. I think for CP3 as well as the Suns and it's based on being in the West. The LA teams haven't played each other in the playoffs since they put their big duos together. Hopefully that eventually happens. They'll be there. You mentioned Denver. They'll get Jamal back who the Suns beat without Murray this year. The Utah Jazz were flirting with the best record in the league all year. Hopefully Klay Thompson returns for the Warriors and you get the Splash Brothers back. So it's gonna be great theater in the Western Conference for years to come. And there are great young teams like Memphis and John Morant and Luka and the Dallas Mavs. 
And so this journey is going to get a lot tougher if you're trying to win the West. We have a lot more to discuss. Stay tuned. You are watching Jalen and Jacoby.